Hey everybody, this is Michelle Luminato and I just want to do a quick tutorial on how to do a header and there's a lot of pieces to a header but what I want to focus on right now is how you actually um, cut out a picture and make a picture um, do a bunch of different things so I'm going to show you how I um, created this picture on my design website and you can start with any picture really it's just a matter of making sure the picture has a high enough quality so when you do scale it up it doesn't get pixelated um, so basically though you're really looking at an image size of that picture probably around 300 um, by 400 somewhere around there because depending on what your header size is you want to make sure that it can actually be that scale and again it's based on how big you make this picture but I'm just going to show you this example for now so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and create a new banner just to show you. So I'm going to go into File, New, and again we're in Photoshop, which is my preferred tool. We're going to just say um, 700 by 300. And this is our image size for this new header that we're working on. And again, this is just for an example, um, not necessarily that it's the exact way to do it. So I'm going to go here and I'm going to pick select all on my photo. So select all. I'm used to doing the quick keys, but I'm going to show you how to do it so you can just go here and find it. And then you're going to go onto your other file and you're going to paste. Um, so, and again, I'm going to show you how, to, how I do this. So if I am a little bit bumpy on the process, that's actually how I work. <laughs> but um, you can just go ahead and click over here. I'm going to scooch this over so you can see a little bit better. Um, down here, this little box is a, um, a way you can create a new layer. So you just click on that and create a new layer. And actually, I'm going to pull that layer down because I want my picture on top. So for right now, what we're going to do is we're just going to add a little bit of color to our background layer. And I'm going to use this rectangle tool. So I'm over here and getting a new tool. And if you look, it's blue and it's highlighted, which means I'm working on that layer. So I'm going to grab a little space. I'm dragging and dropping with my rectangular tool. And I'm actually um, putting some color on that particular layer. And it turned white because that's what I have in my palette. You can just go ahead and pick a color you want in your palette. But what I'm going to show you how to do is actually to go ahead and hit gradient um, so you can actually add some color to it. So you'll have to load up your gradient um, in your palettes. Again, I've got presets already in there. And if you just go Google gradient presets, um, you're going to be able to go ahead and pick whatever ones you want. So let's just pick that for now just to get going. So. We've got this, um, and again, if you click on the eyeball, you can hide it and see it. If it's on blue, that means you're working on it. So we're going to click on this layer and work on the photo, because that's really what we want to do. And we're going to turn this arrow up to hide all that other stuff, because we just want to keep things simple. So we're working on the photo layer. And if you're nervous and you don't want to mess up, you know, you can just copy and paste a new one, or you can go ahead and duplicate the layer and I'll do that if I'm experimenting with a design say I want to scale it a certain way and then maybe next time I want to try it smaller see how it looks I'll just go ahead and duplicate it and try out a couple different things so um, I'm gonna just duplicate it for now just so we can go ahead and test a couple ideas I'm just going to turn off one of them and I'm gonna work on one layer at a time obviously so next what I do is I go in and great um, get my eraser tool and this is really the secret, guys, to cutting out a really clean image. You want to pick a brush that is really a big brush, and it's going to feel a little clumsy at first, but um, the bigger the better. The bigger will definitely give you cleaner edges. So let's go in here now, and it's at 100%, so you're erasing 100%. If you're nervous, you can drop that down you know, to 50, and it'll just take out 50%. Um, I'm going to just do it at 100 and I think the more you do this the better you're going to get. But you're just going to go in at first and just get rid of the obvious stuff. You know, just get rid of the ugly stuff that you really don't need. Um, you don't need to get close up to the actual picture. So I'm going to zoom in now and pull down 
And again, um, this is how I do it. I just take the brush, and if you look, I'm getting as close as I can to the edge. And if you want to just take um, small little clicks, if you can hear the clicks, you know, that way you don't have to, um, if you just hold down and drag, it's going to do one long swoosh at a time. So sometimes I just go in and do a little click at a time, um, you know, getting as close as I can. I'm going to just go back over here and create this side really quick. And again, the idea with the big brush is to keep the edges as smooth as possible. When you start working with little brushes, you'll notice that you get a lot of choppiness going on. And it just it looks choppy, and that's definitely from a small brush. This training I'm giving you goes back to me actually retouching shoes at Nike ages, ages ago. And this was a technique that we learned there, um, you know, to work on really clean edges. So, again, you want to just basically... Get as close as you can. Um, and of course, I should have picked a picture with some cleaner hair, so it would be easier to show you, but this is kind of worst case scenario with a lot of hair. And you just go in, clean it up with a big brush. I'm going to do as much as I can with my big brush, and then I'm going to switch to a smaller brush, but not until the end, because, you know, I really, really want to create as smooth lines as I can here. That edge was a little bit hard to see, but sometimes you can kind of go in and adjust the contrast and see, and we may do that in a second, okay? So now, got a little bit of the top there. I'm going to get a smaller brush. Still, it's pretty big. It's about 40. And these are just sort of, I don't, you know, have a specific size in mind. I just pick one that I think is um, going to get me in the space I need without being too choppy. And again, if it goes off the page, you, you know, you can work around that. But just go in as big as you can. Um, I'm going to go a little bit smaller at the top here. But again, you want to just do it as smooth as possible. Okay. Now I'm going to go back, get a little bit of a smaller brush, and I'm going in for the detail now. And some pictures, and this is a good example of it, you have to go in and actually decide, you know, what you're going to keep. There's kind of, sometimes there's just loose hairs, um, and they're just not worth keeping, so you might want to just delete it if it's kind of one of those hairs that is looking a little odd on its own. I'm going to go in here. Now, again, I could go into this little tiny gap here if I wanted to, but I'm probably going to leave it because honestly when you put it in the scheme of a header it's not going to show up. So let's go back and clean that edge up. Oh, here's some of the tricks I use. So you want to double click because now your picture um, you know you want to position it and you position it by this arrow crosshair tool so you can slide it around and you can see there there's still a little bit um, you know if it's not on your page it's not going to show up but I'll just clean it up anyway and then move it back so you want to pick a position. It's got a hard line um, to the right, so I'm going to just bump that up so it looks a little more natural. And then what I'm going to do is double click on this layer. Now here's where it gets interesting and you can start doing some kind of fun things with it. You can now decide if you would like a drop shadow, um, which could be nice, and you decide the spread of that drop shadow, the size of it if you look you can see it actually kind of going on the edges. That's one way to do it. Um, you can also do an outer glow. Um, and if you highlight the, you have to highlight them, so they have to turn blue. And then you can adjust the spread of that, size of that. And then you can adjust the opacity and kind of play with that until it gets to a nice, subtle sort of um, process there. So. That is how I create some special effects, and it kind of jazzes up the banner as well. So that's it for now on the Photoshop training, and stay tuned for the next one, and get on my website, michellelluminatodesign.com, to learn more. Take care.